welcome to the SciShow Talk Show, that day on SciShow where we talk about stuff with cool people who are doing cool things. Today we have Ellen Whittle, the first student we've ever had here on SciShow Talk Show. Ellen is studying bats because Ellen loves bats. <laughs> I was just talking to Ellen before the show and she is a little bit enthusiastic about bats. A little bit. How did that happen? Um, yeah, so actually the love came after the working with bats. Oh, okay. So uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Of course. Um, so I got into caving first and okay. caving bats kind of goes hand in hand sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so I started to run into bats and see them around and I was, I, I was just blown away. Like they're incredible. The fact that I'm going through a cave that I can barely stand to be in for two hours and they're living in it all winter to escape what's harsher outside. Right. So I was just, I thought that was incredible. Um, so I, I've been working with the Big Fork High School um, Cave Club. I'm a chaperone for them and I go out with them. We do surveys of caves to try to find these winter hibernacula. Um, where the bats are staying. Yeah. Hi, so is that a, is that a plural? Is the hibernacula hi is plural? Hibernaculum is one, and I always screw it up. <laughs> that, so that's like that's that's such a that's an awesome word. Uh, that's that's what Batman should call his lair. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> uh, so what are you what are you studying? Are you doing it by yourself or or with with students or a mixture? So what I'm doing now is um, a senior thesis project on how bats use artificial roosts, so human structures, um, in Montana. And I'm doing that as a, as a research project. I, I'm the only like technician, but I'm doing it for the Montana Natural Heritage Program. Mm -hmm. uh, the Forest Service also supported the project. Um, so I visited Forest Service Bridges purposely for them. They provided a vehicle and, mm. and means to go check all these bridges. So there's so some different parties interested in it. So bridges are your main, are, are your My main, research like, is bridges, okay, yes. Bat, bat structures. Yeah. So artificial structures are not being built specifically for bats, but they're using them. So you've been to visit a lot of bridges. Somewhere around 420. There's lots, a lot of bridges. It is actually a lot, when you consider it's in the space of about two and a half months. What do you find under bridges usually? Really gross stuff. <laughs> um, a lot of bugs, yeah. which sometimes are the gross things, sometimes not. Um, people sometimes. Oh yeah. And totally. and and when I'm really lucky, there's bats. <laughs> <laughs> but not usually. No. <laughs> About how many how many of your bridges had bats or evidence of bats? Oh well, evidence of bats is a different story. Mm -hmm. Roughly half had evidence of bats, so droppings, urine stains, that kind of thing. Which it's pretty funny to get excited about poop. You're like, oh my god, poop! Like, uh, this is exciting because I've been to these bridges all day and not seen any poop. It's bat poop. No, it's bat poop. Not human poop. Ex exactly. Yeah. <laughs> There's different kinds of poop you get excited about. You don't get excited about some poop. Yeah. Um, yeah. So about fifty percent, I would say, and and it gets. Bats definitely use more than 50% of the bridges out here. Mm -hmm. It's just that uh, if you've ever been over like a little wooden forest service bridge lately, right. it's directly over the water. So they, their droppings right. fall right in the water. You're not going to find it. The detectability mm -hmm. is like zero. Yeah. Um, so that's something that when I work into the statistics part of it, I have right. to figure out what's my detectability. And if it's zero, I have to basically discount those yeah. bridges. But as of right now, out of all the bridges, probably about half had bat sign. And day roosting bats, which is what we really wanted to look for, mm -hmm. um, we found oh, probably about somewhere around 15 bridges had day roosting bats. So in you them. actually saw bats there. Yeah, exactly. Which made my, made my day, made my week pretty much every time I found <laughs> this. And there was kind of like two different types. So you've got a bridge that had just a solitary bat in it which was exciting enough. And then you had um, roosts that had more of a colony. Um, mm -hmm. Like maybe like greater than 30 bats would be like a colony. Um, so we had a, we had a lot fewer of those. We had probably um, half of those be just solitary bats. And that's usually like uh, male bats. They're like a bachelor bat. Um, they'll be out there on their own, uh, whereas the females are more likely to be clustered together. Mm -hmm. Or if females are clustered together to raise their young, that's a maternity roost and just like amazing to find. Right, um, so much more rare. Yeah, it's, it's more unusual. We didn't know actually going into it if bats would even do that mm -hmm. in Western Montana right. because previous studies, so uh, Bat Conservation International has, has done studies um, and in 1999 they surveyed a whole lot of bridges uh, south, uh, south in the U.S., um, a whole lot of bridges and 
they were trying to figure out whether they were being used by bats. And they didn't even survey Montana because they said Montana doesn't have the right temperatures to support bats. Right. So, well, we have bats. They know that. <clears throat> they do. And that's, this is the fun part of studying bats is that it's kind of like a grand mystery um, of where the bats go. Because mm -hmm. in the wintertime, like I said, we, we go check these caves to find bats. And, you know, I, I would say we typically find maybe like 10, a dozen bats or so um, in the caves. When you add it all up, it's nowhere near the amount of bats we actually have. So it's like, where are they going? Where are they? Exactly. They're, we don't know where they're going. There's either a, a huge cave somewhere where they all are at and they're all like, ha ha, you can't find us. Or there's something else, some part of the story we don't know. Wow. I love a mystery. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I want to help find out. Yeah. So how are bats doing? In Montana, they're doing okay. Um, you know, all over the world, bats are declining. Yeah. Uh, different reasons. Habitat loss. You'd be surprised. You wouldn't think caves would be a habitat right. that you could lose, but it totally is. Um, especially right. as people get into them more, there's there's tour caves mm -hmm. and that kind of thing that starts impacting. And them. then it, it, are artificial structures to sort of subpar for bat habitat? That is a great question. Is uh, that sort of what part of <laughs> part of what you're trying to figure out? It is part of what I'm trying to figure mm -hmm. out. Um, there's definitely been been studies saying that actually bridges can do just as well for bats, if not better. Um, mm -hmm. There is research out there to say that for some species. They can't serve as habitat for all species though. Um, Brazilian free-tailed bats are the ones that are pretty famous for doing really well in bridges. You have huge colonies um, down in Texas of Brazilian free-tailed bats. They do really well, but that means they have to be able to tolerate disturbance pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, like Because there's going to be human traffic and human, right. human uh, Loud and interference. Yeah. So if they're pretty cool with that, then they're going to do really well and they can use bridges really well. So our question is, you know, in Montana, our bridges are maybe not as well trafficked as like an Austin, mm -hmm. Texas bridge. Um, so what kind of species are using them? We have no idea. Um, and whether it's good habitat for, for bats in Montana. And the fact that I found maternity colonies at all, that they're raising their young in the bridges, says that we have habitat that works for them because they wouldn't right. choose to, to have their colony there otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, uh, Jesse is not going to be bringing us a bat today. I think that, that would be probably bad for the bat, um, but depends on the bat. Some of them are, them are more are gregarious than others. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Jesse does have uh, an animal that she's going to bring us. Jesse from Animal Wonders mm -hmm. will be appearing where you're sitting very soon. <laughs> Jesse has arrived. Hey, Carlos. <laughs> Carlos the colorful. Hello, Carlos. <laughs> Carlos is a Sinaloan milk snake. What was the first word? Sinaloan. Sinaloan. So they're from Mexico. Okay. Sonora, Sinaloa, and Chihuahua, okay. Mexico. Um, they come from arid regions, grasslands, Rockies. Are you so strong? Do they like milk? <laughs> they got their name because, um, yeah, people were finding them in their barns, and the you know old wives' tale was that they were stealing the milk from the cows. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing this snake attached to an udder, but not biting it. <laughs> Just suckling. Just sucking on it. Yeah. Aww. Just well, maybe a bunch. Like every nipple has another snake hanging <laughs> Just off. Just hanging. Of it. Oh, that'd be uh, weird. <laughs> it's super terrifying. Yeah. Poor cow. Poor cow. Yeah. Would this eat a bat? Um, if the bat was small enough. There's I mean, pretty small bats out there. Um, he can eat some. He can fit something twice the width of the biggest part of his body. So if the bat, <laughs> oh, you know, yeah, yeah was he could that definitely big. eat some bats. Yeah. <laughs> um, he is terrestrial, so he's not arboreal. So he's not going to be climbing Climb. up, yeah. you know, finding stuff. But if he did happen to go into a cave and there was a bat down there, he probably would. Um, milk snakes are actually pretty, you know, general eaters. They're not going to just eat other snakes or other lizards or birds. They're going to eat pretty much whatever they come across. Whatever is there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, so, wish but, I, had a, I wish I shared a bat with you, but... No, you don't have any bats. I know. That's okay. Bats are amazing, though. And poop. Yeah. Poop. Yes. <laughs> Poop's the best. Yes. There's a lot of poop He's work. He's a biologist, the best friend. A lot of poop friend. work over here. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so if you saw this snake in the wild, what would you think? What would you do? Uh, as with all snakes in the wild, I would go... Look, a snake, and then I would stay pretty far away from it. Nice. That's good. That's basically my my yeah. Good. In fact, that's how I also operate with mammals, uh, birds, reptiles, <laughs> fish. Well, that's good. Fish. Uh, hey, Here we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Barracuda. 
Uh, sharks are fish? Are there a lot of those in Montana? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know much about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, yeah, so, so if so, you yeah. saw him, yeah, I mean, that's a good, that's a good yeah, advice but, for but, any wild animal, actually, right. is to, to, to observe from afar. But, but with that particular one. color combination, I would think, stay away. Why? Well, isn't there a, isn't there a, there's a, a poem you can recite yes. to figure out if yes. it's what is this? Yeah, red yellow and yellow, or black and fellow. yellow, or red, any Something. color, any kind of color of snake. Just <laughs> I don't. Think, I think we should let, let her try. <laughs> no, 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 let her try. <laughs> Go. I, I can't remember. It's like red, red and yellow, kill a fellow, and then like uh, red and black, make no attack. I don't know. So. Yeah, that's really close. I, I, I know it as friend of Jack, which is kind of arbitrary. Ja- Jack, but Jack. no other humans. Exactly. If you're not Jack, <laughs> stay back. Watch out. <laughs> oh, but yeah, there's a rhyme there, and that rhyme is, is associated with these coloration patterns. Right. So if the red colors, is touching the black, yep, it's going to be yellow. It's going to be a coral snake. Okay. Just highly venomous. Wait, wait. Wait, wait. No, I said it backwards. You said it back. I said it backwards. Yeah. So if it if it's red and black, then if the red is touching the black and not touching the yellow. So apparently yes. we're okay here. Then we're safe. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So red touching black, friend of Jack. You know, it's a milk snake or a king snake. And then if the red is touching yellow, yeah, dangerous fellow, it's it's the coral snake. But but there's mutations all the time, so don't right. be right. like, oh, oh look, red like- is touching black. Let's poke it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, just give them their space. You know, they have this coloration to help, you know, protect them. Warning coloration, mm-hmm. mimicry. That's pretty. I like the knot he's tied there on your hand. Jewelry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, jewelry. Do you want to feel him? Of course. Oh, he's moving with me. Into the hole on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So soft. Oh, snakes. Actually soft. I feel like uh, snakes were way more terrifying before I touched one. And the first yes. one I touched one, I was like, oh, that's kind of nice. Like, oh, it's just a, it's just a thing. It's, a, it's just another animal. And it's different than Whereas, me, but it's like you get past that. Right. That wall that's of wrong. fear. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a thing that I know to not be around. So. Yeah, I think that's where I, you know, my fascination with snakes was just, I didn't have a lot of interaction with them when I was younger. And then I, I went to a reptile convention and they're just everywhere. Mm-hmm. And you just get down and you look at them and you're like, oh, and they're just... They're just amazing. I feel like that's kind of the problem with bats is that you have even less exposure to them and then you do these guys. There are pet snakes, but you, yeah. and not advocating for pet bats, but yeah. like people don't see them unless they're in a situation that they shouldn't mm-hmm. be there. Mm-hmm. Like if they get into your house and, and you know, they might be ill or something like that. Mm-hmm. They've fallen on the ground. And so they're th- flapping and scary. Yeah, and, and they're scary and they, they belong at night. You know, they, mm-hmm. you can't actually see them. and. I'll tell you what's amazing is like if you ever get the chance to actually like look face to face with a bat and they look back at you and you're just like, okay, like right. you see the intelligence in their face. And it's, it's like when you're getting up close with these guys, you're like, wow, you know, this isn't a scary uh, thing of the night. That's, you know, just they have a, they have, they're a being. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're there. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, awesome. Thanks, Carlos, for coming to visit. When was it? When, when and what was the last thing Carlos ate? <sighs> a week ago, he ate a very small little rat. Mm. So in a couple days, he'll be hungry again. <laughs> but not right now. Nope. Okay, good. <laughs> um, thanks for visiting, Carlos. Thanks for bringing Carlos to us, Jesse. Yeah. Jesse's channel is at youtube.com slash animalwondersmontana. And Alan, thanks for bringing all of your amazing insight and stories. And, thanks again for having me. Yeah, and, uh, and also doing the work you're doing, because it sounds pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep it up. Uh, and thanks to all of you for watching this episode of the SciShow Talk Show. If you want to keep getting smarter with us here at SciShow, you can go to youtube.com slash SciShow and subscribe. Mm-hmm.